Valve just released a massive update to the Steam performance overlay that now shows you your minimum, maximum and average FPS, CPU and GPU usage, temperatures, VRAM and more, all in game built right into Steam available right now. And it might actually be better than tools like Reva Tuner or Nvidia and AMD's own GPU overlays. In this video I'll be showing you how to set this up step by step on your system to get more insight in your PC games, your system hardware and potentially boost FPS or fix potential performance issues you might be experiencing. Experiencing. Get Windows activated for a great price with WhoKeys. Use the links below for Windows 11, Windows 10 or Office. Apply code PAN20 at checkout for an additional 25% off. Secure payment options including PayPal are available. Once complete, just paste the key to activate Windows and remove the watermark. Windows 10 keys can also upgrade to Windows 11. Use the links in the description below and thank you to WhoKeys for sponsoring. All of the settings we're about to utilize for the Steam overlay will also apply to the Steam application for Linux. Head inside of Steam, go to the top left hand side, go down to Steam settings. On the left hand side, go down to in game. At the top of in game, ensure that enable Steam overlay whilst in game is enabled. Scroll down, you'll then be able to see a few options available to you for the brand new performance monitor. The only setting I would recommend adjusting in this screen for now is to set a toggle performance monitor key. This is a super simple hotkey that you can enable to both turn on and off the in-game performance monitor whilst you're playing any of your Steam games. Just simply click where it says none, then press any key on your keyboard you would like to set this to. I would recommend using a key that you don't commonly use, so I'm just going to select the right square bracket. Select confirm, head over to Steam and boot any game from your Steam library. If you would like to make use of the new Steam performance overlay on games that are not in your Steam library, I will be covering that later on in the video, so stay tuned. For me, I've booted into The Last of Us. You can boot into any game. This also works across all multiplayer games and anything on Steam. Once you're inside of the game, open the Steam overlay with shift and tab on your keyboard. At the bottom of your screen, go to the settings cog found in the bottom right hand side. Go to the in-game panel once again. Scroll down to overlay performance monitor. Go to show performance monitor. Switch this from off to any of the available options. For me, I like to have this set up in the top center, but you can have it appear anywhere on your screen. We then have a few options available to us. We have the performance level of detail. This will be how in depth the performance overlay is. You can set this just to a single FPS value, showing you just the FPS you're currently getting. So for me, that's 102. Instead, you could go with FPS details. This will show you your current FPS, your minimum FPS, and your maximum FPS. You could go with FPS details, CPU, and GPU utilization. This will show you all of the FPS values, but also include your CPU usage and GPU usage. And last but not least, as of this update, you have FPS, CPU, GPU, and RAM full details. This will give you a full rundown of all of the available components that the Steam overlay has access to, including your FPS, your CPU usage and boost clocks, GPU usage, GPU temperature, RAM usage, and VRAM usage. There are also two optional graphs that you can choose to enable. Show FPS average slash min graph. This will show you a small but super handy FPS graph, which maps out the FPS you've been receiving over the last 90 seconds. Your average FPS is indicated in green, and your minimum FPS or FPS stutters will be marked out in red when and if they happen. Once you've enabled the overlay on your system, you can then press that hotkey to both enable and disable the overlay with just a click of a button. It's just that simple and easy to use. We can now customize the size, the look, and the location of the overlay. We then have the options for text scaling size, if we adjust this, it's going to adjust the entire size of the overlay you have enabled. As you can see, for me, this is now quite small. So what I'd recommend that you do is adjust the text size scaling to your personal preference and also make use of the different locations you can put the performance overlay. So if instead I wanted it at the bottom center of my screen, I can have that. I can bring the scaling all the way down and make it relatively small. That way, if I want to quickly glance at my system details, I can have it up basically all of the time. Or if I want to hide it, I can press that hotkey. For text, contrast, and saturation, if you would like to remove the colors from the overlay for the most part, you can do so by reducing this all the way down to the bottom. You can also adjust the background opacity. This is pretty self-explanatory. If you just want the values to be floating on the screen, then you can remove this or set it all the way up if you don't want it to be transparent at all. So play around with these options and get the overlay completely dialed in for how you like it. Remember, you don't have to have this enabled or on screen at all times. You can simply just press the hotkey not have it running, and if you want to see what performance data is, just press the hotkey and it's immediately on your screen. 
Now this is currently supported on both Windows 10, Windows 11 and many Linux distributions. The amount of hardware specs that are on screen for you will depend on what level of the performance monitor you have enabled, the operating system that you're currently running on and the hardware in which you are using because some hardware vendors may not support the performance overlay yet or have sensors or data points that can access so you may be missing some metrics on your screen. This is still relatively early days for the Steam performance overlay so if some things are missing you'll more than likely see support for them coming in the future alongside further support for the Linux operating system, but for now, going from left to right and explaining everything that you need to know and how this can be useful to you. First of all, in the top left-hand side, we have FPS. The value on the left-hand side is the FPS we are currently getting. The value next to this is your minimum FPS, followed by your maximum FPS. The minimum and maximum FPS values work slightly differently in the Steam overlay than they do in other third-party applications. For the minimum and maximum values, Steam will show you the lowest or highest FPS you receive, even if it's for a single frame, and average it to what it would be if the entire frame was at that FPS. For typical FPS counters, your minimum and maximum will be the amount of frames captured in that second. But during that second, some of those frames could be heavily delayed, but you wouldn't notice that if the value is averaged. Utilizing the Steam minimum and maximum FPS values will show you the actual minimum and maximum FPS values down to the frame and not frames per second. And it's calculated utilizing the frame times or time between frames. This is then translated into an FPS value which you can see on your screen and clearly see if you're getting massive FPS drops, even if they are just for a brief moment where that stutter may typically be missed if you're looking at it through a more typical FPS counter. But to look at this basically, it's your minimum and maximum FPS. For the minimum FPS value, if this drops quite drastically causing a massive micro stutter, this may also appear in red. And if you see that, it's quite a clear indication that you do have some stuttering or performance issues. Now this could be due to loading into a new part of a map or a different level and those are normal. But if you're seeing these stutters constantly throughout standard gameplay, then you're more than likely running into a performance issue. To the right of this, we have the optional FPS graph. This graph indicates your last 90 seconds of FPS or frame times. This will show you how consistent or inconsistent your FPS is. And if you see any major FPS FPS stutters, those will also be marked out in red. Moving over to CPU. The percentage number on the left hand side is your average CPU usage across all of its CPU cores. To the right of this, we have the highest utilized CPU core out of my entire CPU, and these numbers refresh every second. So for me, I'm currently utilizing 66% of my CPU across all of its cores, and the most used core is utilizing about 167%. The reason for this number being higher than 100% on my system is because my CPU supports CPU clock boosting, and most modern CPUs will do this. So if you have the FPS overlay up on your screen, you might notice that your most utilized CPU core is also over 100%, and that's completely fine and within spec. If your highest CPU core did not boost and was utilized at 100%, the value would be 100%. But if your CPU core is under 100% load, but it's also boosting its frequency higher than what the base clock is, let's say by 50%, then that CPU usage value would be listed as 150%. The amount your CPU can boost will completely depend on the CPU architecture and the CPU specs. This will come down to the base clock compared to the boost clock and will also depend on how many CPU cores are being utilized at once. On modern CPUs, if you had an application only loading two CPU cores, the CPU clock speed will be a lot higher than if you had an application maximizing all CPU cores. To the right of this, you have the optional CPU core usage graph. Each one of these bars or dots represents a single CPU core on your CPU. So depending on how many cores and threads you have on your CPU will depend on how large or small this graph is. This CPU I'm currently utilizing is 16 cores and 32 threads. And you can see I have 32 data points in my graph. If I utilized one of my other PCs, such as my eight core 16 thread CPU, or my 12 core 24 thread CPU, you can see the graphs are completely different. This is super useful across all games you play because it's a good indication of how many CPU cores the game is actually using. Now do bear in mind, this is going to show core usage across your entire system, not just what the game is utilizing. In this example, you can see the game is primarily utilizing the first 16 cores of my CPU. Now this is quite an unusual situation due to the CPU I'm currently running on. If we switch over to the same game, but on a different CPU, you can see that it's utilizing a lot of different cores. The reason it's only utilizing about half of my CPU on my setup is because I'm utilizing a Ryzen 9 X3D CPU, where half of the CPU cores have access to that powerful 3D cache, and the other half of the cores can clock higher but do not have access to the 3D cache. Thankfully, as of newer updates to Windows 11, the automatic core selection behavior for this CPU is actually quite good, so the game is preferring to utilize the cores that have access to the faster 3D cache, which allows the game to run better on my system. 
If you're utilizing a modern Intel CPU, laptop CPU, or other hybrid style architecture, you might also see similar behavior where only some of your CPU cores are being utilized. And this could be because those are the performance cores and not the efficiency cores. This tool can be incredibly useful if you are looking to adjust which CPU cores certain applications can make use of and double check with the Steam Overlay to verify any changes you make. Next is your CPU speed. The first number is the CPU speed across the entire CPU across all cores averaged. The number next to this is the speed of the fastest core currently being utilized on your system. My entire CPU is averaging 4.10 gigahertz and the fastest core is currently running at 4.67. Next up is GPU. The first number is your GPU utilization. Next is your GPU's temperature, which is taken from the hottest temperature sensor on your GPU. If you don't see this number, your GPU won't currently be supported, but it might be in the future. Next is your GPU's VRAM. The first number is how much GPU VRAM we are currently utilizing. The number next to this is the GPU's overall VRAM. So for me, I'm utilizing 10 out of 16 gigabytes. And last but not least is RAM. The first number is how much system RAM we're utilizing across our entire system currently. And the number next to this is your entire system's available memory. One of the really impressive metrics when it comes to utilizing the Steam Performance Overlay, when compared to something such as RTSS or Reva Tuner Statistics Server or other FPS monitoring software, is we can actually monitor the performance impact of frame generation in games that support frame generation baked into them. So for me on Cyberpunk, you can see my current FPS is is about 120 and I'm not currently utilizing frame gen. If we go into the settings for Cyberpunk or any game that supports frame generation, enable your frame generation mode with frame generation enabled on our game. The number on the left hand side next to FSR or if you enable DLSS, DLSS is our FPS with frame generation enabled. To the right of this we have our standard FPS value which the game is currently running at if we were not utilizing frame gen. So think of this as the game's engine FPS and to the right of that we also still have the minimum FPS and the maximum FPS values. This is super useful to see why games utilizing frame generation might feel sluggish or slow in some cases because even though with frame generation your FPS might still be quite high such as 100 you'd be able to see that your base FPS is down at 50 so the game still might feel quite sluggish. Because if you didn't know frame generation doesn't actually increase the the speed of the game. It just increases the smoothness. The game will still be rendering and running at the base FPS you were getting before, which is what's responsible for input latency and how snappy and fast a game feels. Adding frame generation on top of that will make things visually smoother, but it will not speed up the game itself. That's not a reason not to use it, it's just to make sure that you are aware that this won't actually be speeding up the game, you are just increasing smoothness. And it's super useful to see these metrics which are available to you at the click of a button. Again, if I don't want to see this information anymore, I can just simply press that hotkey button that we set up earlier and it's removed. If for any reason I want to see what my FPS is, if my game doesn't feel right, or if I'm just interested, press the hotkey again and we're immediately back. Now, if you do happen to be experiencing big FPS stutters, lower than expected performance, or just overall performance issues in any of your favorite games, here are some of the common things that you should look for and potentially change if you happen to run into them. First of all is to look at the temperature of your GPU. If your GPU's temperature is incredibly high, it's more than likely downclocking itself. And if this is happening, it's going to reduce the clocks of the GPU, meaning your GPU will be temporarily running slower, which will also be reducing your FPS. If your GPU VRAM's usage is quite close to the maximum available, at the maximum available or worse over the maximum available this is more than likely going to be the number one reason why your game is running into stutters low than expected performance or potential graphics issues this is a clear indication that you might be running background applications or have another game open or some sort of 3d application that might be utilizing video memory close it out tap back into your game and see if there is an immediate reduction in your gpu's vram usage if there is not it's more than likely a clear indication that you're running your game settings or game resolution slightly too high for the gpu you currently have the best Thing you can do in that situation is to start off by utilizing something like upscaling such as FSR, DLSS or XESS to reduce the rendering resolution of the game itself. Next you could also look to apply a slightly lower graphics preset. If you're playing at ultra try high, if you're playing at high try medium. Adjust those settings just to remove some of that excess pressure on your GPU's VRAM to give you some headroom which could potentially fix many micro stuttering issues you could be experiencing. Earlier in this video, I did mention that you can have access to the Steam Performance Overlay in non-Steam games. I've been making use of this in games which are not in my Steam library, such as Escape from Tarkov, and you can do the same. Your mileage may vary, but this should work. You first of all need to add your non-Steam game into your Steam library. You'll do this by navigating inside of Steam, going to the bottom left-hand side to add a game, 
then select add a non-Steam game. Inside of the list that opens up, scroll down, you might be able to find the exact game with inside of here that you wish to add. If you don't see the game, but you see the game's launcher that you use, then you'll want to add that. Then select add selected programs. All I then need to do is find the game or game launcher I added to my Steam library and play it through Steam. Thank you ever so much for taking the time to watch this video. Consider clicking on the video on screen or checking out the playlist section in the description down below and I'll see you in the next one.